Hey, what's going on guys? Got another EDC for you today. And so this one actually is a day late, so I'm sorry, but I've been really busy with finals and all, and so um, it came out a day late, but uh, it's still very close, and I hope you guys will enjoy it anyway. Um, now there isn't much that's changed, although I do have a couple different concepts I want to talk to you guys about, um, with carrying fixed blades and all. Um, but let's just jump into it with some of the other items. So first, pen. One of my favorite pens. Um, I'm honestly looking to get a different pen sometime, just like a nicer, less bulky pen, even though it being bulky is pretty much the reason I got it. But this is the Hoffman Richards Tactical Stinger Pen. And now, I got this pen to be beefy and hard and, I mean, I guess, pokey, if you want a tactical slash self-defense pen. But, I mean, I just got it because it was cool and it looked durable and, I mean, I don't know. There wasn't much to it. It writes really great. Um, it's just a pop top. It works really well. Uh, but yeah, there's there's really not much to it. But it's a cool little pen. And by little, I don't mean little. Now, Zippo. Now, this guy I won't carry most of the time, but I figured I'd put it in just because when I carry a lighter, I prefer this Zippo. Just because. I mean, most of the reason I'd carry a lighter is, I, mean, I guess, in case I need to burn something. I mean, there's always that survival aspect. Occasionally, I'll work with paracord. You see, I have some paracord here. So it's nice to have it. I pretty much never carry it, though. Sometimes they'll go in a backpack as a just-in-case type thing. But I like Zippos just because, I mean, the collectability of it. I mean, this one is incredibly standard. But they're more collectible than bits. Or, not bits, oh my gosh. Bix. <laughs> You guys know what I mean. But they're just more fun, honestly. It's got a moving part that helps. Honestly, some people are really good at tricks with these. I am not. I can do pretty much no tricks with them. Um, but some people are really good at that, and it's kind of cool. I might learn some of those sometime. Um, it's kind of similar to balance on flipping. You guys know I do that. But um, it's just cool stuff. Uh, the next wallet. have this with me a lot of the time, of course. <laughs> Um, this is the big skinny. There's nothing special about it, except that it is very thin. Holds everything I need to, and fits in my back pocket, and then it's just there for the entire day. There's nothing special about it. Now, I'm considering trading this out for a different wallet, just because it's it's a big profile here, you guys said, and I said, oh, you guys probably know. Actually, let's see the leak. I think it's very similar in size, yeah. So it's almost the exact same size here right now as the leak. There you see, there's just that tiny bit extra. Um, and then of course it is huge this way. So this is a very large wallet, but it is very slim this way. And so I might end up trading it out to get something that will work a little better for me. It isn't quite as big, but still as slim because I cannot stand bulkier wallets, even if they're not that bulky. Like something like this. This is the other wallet I'll carry, this is a Colombian wallet. Now, this doesn't have anything in it right now because it's all in this wallet. But still, this wallet can be kind of bulky. That's partially because it's a trifold wallet. And, you know, but still. Alright, enough about those. Let's talk about knives. Now, this is pretty much a knife channel, and so, knives. Now, you guys see me carry these knives pretty much all the time. It's almost decided that these are my two favorite folders I own just because I carry them all the time. I love them so much. Now, this is the Benchmade 940, of course. Now, this is the 940-2, which is the same as the 940, except it is a flow-through design instead of having a full back spacer. It has a couple barrel spacers, which are anodized green, and it has a G10 handle instead of aluminum. Now, honestly, I prefer G10 over aluminum in most cases, just because, well, instead of painted aluminum, there's the thing. Now you can't really get it without a painted aluminum scales. It's green most of the time. There have been sprint runs in red. Um, and I'm sure there have been sprint runs in other colors, like blue probably. But um, you get it in green most of the time and it just wears off even when it's just doing nothing but sitting in your pocket. And so I don't, not a big fan of that for a knife I'm gonna carry a lot. Um, also, I heard the balance was a lot better on these. Now, this is an incredibly balanced knife, as you would expect. I mean, right where your finger wraps around it, it stays, and it's perfect. Um, but, uh, yeah. 
as you guys know, is a great knife. Most carried knife. Probably by far now, except for when I didn't have a choice between what knives I'd carry, because I just owned one. Those were a long time ago, those days. Um, the other one that I carry, not as much, but I'd say pretty close, is the Kershaw Leak. Now, I like this knife just because it's a classic one, it's plain, it's slim, it, it's just perfect to me. Um, there's not much I would change about it, except cut down the weight a little more. Now, that is just because it has, what are they, stainless steel? Yeah, I believe they're stainless steel liners slash frame. So, I mean, it's, that's how it is. Um, it is assisted, which I'm not a fan of in most cases. But I haven't de-assisted this one just because I don't really care enough to. Um, if, if it's not a bad assisted and I already bought the knife, then I'll just keep it like that. And so, bad plan. But <laughs> either way, it's a great knife and I would highly recommend it. Now, this is more of my gentleman's carry. This is more of my EDC, but I honestly carry both of them all the time. Um, but next, here actually, I'll keep the 940 out for size comparison, just for a second. Next is a knife you have seen before. I have reviewed this, like the other two, on my channel. Now this is the CRKT. There, you see it there. And this is the Obake or Obaki. I've heard it so many ways. I'll show it to you guys, just so you know. Now, I say Obake. I think it's honestly supposed to be pronounced Obaki. But, I mean, come on, I'm not going to say that. So, the Obake it is. Now, this is the fixed blade that I've carried a couple times this week, and many times this month. But I know I've carried it twice this week. But I don't normally carry fixed blades. I am a folder guy. I love my folders. I'll carry a folder, and occasionally a multi-tool, and then I'm happy. That's all I need. But I've been getting more into self-defense style blades. And now there are other blades to do that. A lot of people would say this is not the blade for that. Um, because it's just different and weird. And there are some great self-defense folders. For instance, this is my go-to self-defense folder. This is the Kershaw and Emerson collaboration. This is a CQC 4XL. And so this is my go-to for uh, I mean, tactical slash self-defense folder. Although I also have some cool options as well. Dagger bladed OTFs are always a good choice for me. But I'll carry one of those two, and most of the time it will be this. Just because, other than a fixed blade, I would say a wave is the fastest deployment from your pocket that you can get. And that's why I choose it. Now, this wave, if you guys don't know, it's something Emerson has. I mean, I guess a couple other companies have adapted something similar. Um, I know Cold Steel has the Quillian, which does not work as well. But it, it's they're trying to make something that you can wave but not wave it out of your pocket um, basically how this works is if this is sitting in your pocket like so I'm gonna pretend my fingers are the pocket now of course the clip would be on the outside but you have a pocket like this now I would go to grab it out and when it gets to be right about here this wave would catch on the seam of your pocket and it would open it now when you do this with very much momentum or if you really just pull back at all I'm not gonna do it with my finger because it'll hurt but it will Okay, fine, I'll try. Flick the knife open, like that. And then you have an open blade immediately once you pull it out of your pocket. And it is very quick, and I would say the fastest than a fixed blade. And this is also a big knife. I believe it's the biggest out of the um, Kershaw Emerson lineup. But this is my go-to for a self-defense folder. But, uh, not doing that, I'll carry this. Now, this is a Japanese style blade. I believe it's Japanese Tanto. Style blade, and yeah, I know, it's not an Americanized Tanto. So why would that be a Tanto? Um, a lot of people, and I used to think of this too, whenever they heard Tanto, they would think of something like this. I'm looking through my knife drawer for a Tanto, and honestly, I'm not seeing one. It must be in my knife case. <laughs> my knife case is farther away from the camera. Um, but you guys know what it looks like. It's just a huge point. Um, and here's a good picture of it, kind of. This is a reverse tanto. I imagine the sharpened edge was kind of here. You'd get a little more of a picture of what it looks like. Now, this is not something like that. This is a Japanese-style tanto. And this thing pierces incredibly well, similar to the Americanized tanto. 
but a lot of that is just due to this grind. It does have a very thin grind, as you see. It's very thin behind the edge, so it cuts very nicely, and it stabs very nicely as well. Let's get a focus on that tip, because why not? Is it going to focus there? There is no way. Well, let's just look at it like this. And it does have a very pretty blade pattern. A lot of people just say that that is, looks cool. Some people would say it's Damascus or Damascus-esque. But um, it's a type of acid etching, I believe. They did something like put a DLC coating on it and then etched it. And then, there you go, there's a cool thing. I mean, I don't know, I'm not a knife maker. But I would just call this an acid etched finish. Um, so, part of it has coating, part of it doesn't, it's like that. Now, very acute point, remember, great for stabbing, slicing, and there is no guard or really anything to prevent your um, fingers from slipping up, which is not ideal. I would prefer just like a little bit of a swell there even, um, but when you're in the re reverse grip, that doesn't matter to me, and that's how I would grab this when it's deployed. Now, the sheath. Before this video gets to be 12 minutes long, let's talk about the sheath real quick. Now, I use the sheath like a sheath. Oh, so it sits in this here. Now I use this little paracord loop I made. Now, hey, look, see, that's what you use a lighter for. Um, basically, I will loop the sheath through uh, itself and through a belt loop. So it will be attached to a belt loop, like so, kind of. I'm not actually going to do it, but it will be attached to a belt loop, and then this will go in your pocket or in your inseam or I don't know, wherever. Um, and then it stay, it sits there, it stays there, and whenever you want to draw it, you just lift up your shirt if you need to, if it's in your inseam, and pull it out, and right about here, this will stay on your belt loop, and it will make, make great friction. Now this is a Kydex sheath, and so it will just pop out. And it's really easy when you're doing it, not in the restraints of a camera. But that's how the sheath works, and it does work good for self-defense. And I do want to get the soft P dagger sometime. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get it. But that's a similar concept of how you'd carry it, kind of. A little bit. But thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions, make sure to comment them down below. And please subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.